How far can a Model 3 go? A lot of people are asking this question. Of course, we know what the EPA rating is, which is 310 miles for the long range battery, the only one available right now. Uh, some people have been known to squeeze out more than that out of the car, but now this week, a new record was set uh, uh, with someone doing uh, hypermiling, I guess it's called, and I'll tell you about it. Uh, uh, Insurance Institute of Highway Safety is now conducting tests on the Model 3. A couple of uh, uh, results are already came out and it's pretty good. And I will also answer a comment of the day. It's all coming up next. Thank you so much for joining me on Patreon Live. If you're watching me live, thank you for supporting the show. Of course, if you want to become a part of that community, patreon.com slash e for electric That's how you can support me. That's how you can uh, uh, make sure that the show st stays independent. Uh, of course, you're watching me on YouTube on the replay. Thank you so much for that. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, a quick reminder, uh, Steve Burns, the CEO of Workhorse, is going to be here to discuss their... Um, uh, electric uh, plug-in hybrid uh, pickup truck the only one really that's coming out on the market this year and their uh, delivery vans that are all electric there they've started some of the pilot deliveries in here in the bay area so that's exciting I'm going to talk to him then uh, michael Pershki, who is the ceo of automobili paninfarina uh, he's going to be here the week after that to talk uh, to me about the very first paninfarina car that they're unveiling this summer and after a week after that chad balch is going to be here from chevrolet communications of course we're going to talk about some uh, interesting stuff i'm going to ask him some interesting questions about the Chevy Bolt and some other um, electric ele electrification stuff going on at Chevrolet. So, all right, let's talk about Model 3. All right, we know the EPA rating is 310 miles. There were multiple reports coming out when uh, the EPA was testing this car that uh, Tesla has kind of uh, um, lobbied for um, lower number because obviously they didn't want uh, the Model 3 to be that far ahead of the Model S and Model X as far the range is concerned. Um, it is not a third generation car as a lot of people think it is. It is actually a smaller version, obviously cheaper version uh, of uh, their signature Model S uh, flagship sedan. So that um, that they, they were trying to be very careful about that. But nevertheless, a lot of people do believe that because it's a, it's a, it, it is the latest te uh, Tesla battery technology. So it does have a little bit of a longer range than I think a, a lot of people might think based on EPA. And people have been known to squeeze a little bit more out of it. But this uh, week, um, this guy, I think his name is Sean uh, let me bring up the uh, the tweet. So his name is Sean Mitchell. And so he did what's called hypermiling. I, it's when you try to put a car in like a perfect condition, on a perfect speed, on a perfect uh, a sort of a route to see how much mileage you can get out of it. I believe the record for the Model S right now belongs to somebody in Europe. I think they went 670 miles in there. Um, the ultimate speed for that one was a little over 20 miles an hour, but Sean determined that for this one, the ultimate speed is about 30 miles an hour, which is kind of interesting because that is more kind of a real life speed, I think, when people just drive around in regular uh, neighborhoods. That's kind of the speed that you usually uh, usually stay around. So that's kind of a more of a realistic uh, I, I, I think speed now he also chose a route now as you can see he he says he was aiming for 600 miles uh he ended up with 515 almost 516 miles he stopped his trip a little short um he still had some energy left so he probably would have gotten a little more out of it so still pretty impressive he's gonna try it again i'm looking forward to that um now i'm a little surprised that you know because the expectations the Model 3 battery is just a little bit better and should get a longer range than the Model S, I'm surprised that um, the goal is even 600 when the record for the Model S is 670, I believe. So that's a little weird. Maybe I should ask him. I, I tried to contact him earlier today. We'll see if he replies. I'll, I'll ask him about that. Maybe I should have him on the show and just so he can give us all of the information. But nevertheless, this is pretty exciting because this is at a higher speed. So it means if you're driving around Model 3 on a flat road, so, you know, relatively perfect conditions where, you know, here in California, it's not that hard to achieve them sometimes, um, then, you know, your your juice is going to last you much longer than you think for the Model 3. So that's so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that news. All right, there's another news coming out uh, about the Model 3. Before that, of course, I want to remind you guys that this uh, channel and this show is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories 
for Tesla in general, but uh, for Model 3 in particular, they have quite a few things going on there. So check them out if you want to shop there. Uh, don't forget to grab the discount code in the description of this video that they gave us so you can guys can save uh, a few bucks when you shop there. All right, let's move on to the next uh, story, which is um, Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. As you can see from their Twitter post is now starting uh, to test uh, Tesla Model 3. Uh, so far, the results are, are, are good. Here's the screenshot from their website. As you can see, um, they uh, scored superior for the front crash uh, of prevention. Um, and, and that's what the, I think they, the, the photo on Twitter was for. And then the headlights also scored um, a grade of A. So that's a good start. Now, Teslas have done well with, with this, uh, with these testing with the IHS. So I, there will be no surprise, I think, if they continue doing very well here. Um, so I'm uh, so far so good. I know they will keep us updated. I will also keep you guys updated on all of this um, as they continue coming up and really probably when they have the final rating. Uh, by the way, have you guys seen this video? Um, this was posted by Katas uh, 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 um, uh, Airlines, I guess, Katas uh, company where um, this plane was being dragged by the Model X. Now, we know Model X can, can have a pretty good towing power, but this is yet another display of its power. I believe this one made a uh, made it into the Guinness uh, Book of Records. Uh, I think for the like a regular sedan or regular car or SUV towing the most uh, uh, behind it and plane is a lot. So that's pretty cool. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Tesla um, has it on their website, on their Instagram. So all the social media of Tesla and um, uh, Katas uh, uh, have that. So that's pretty cool. I thought I would I thought I would just uh, mention it really quick, but uh, but 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 let's move on to the comment of the day, and that's what uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. And this one is actually um, about uh, you know uh, the report uh, that I did about you know Elon Musk being a little pissed off still at at the media, and some people say, well, he's not really pissed off; he's just addressing it well. When you tweet about it and you kind of call out the media, I do think that you're kind of pissed. And, you know, he had some reasons, you know, I, I, I arrested yesterday. But here's a, a, a comment that I got from Thomas. He said, regarding the Washington Post article, it's uh, hardly relevant if the article is fair, which I said that by reading the article, you can kind of see that it's relatively fair. Uh, many, many people just read headlines. So the result of a headline like that one on the front page should be fairly obvious. That sucks and it's total bias. Now, I did mention that, yeah, the fact that they even did this story was you know, kind of BS, I agree, because there is no story yet, because we don't know what really happened. Once you do the investigative journalist that you guys are supposed to do, then we can talk about it. But, and yes, they kind of put the fact that it's an autopilot related right up front, which it turns out to be a, a, an autopilot related, to be fair. And they did try to reach out to Tesla. It didn't seem that they replied right away. That was my criticism for Tesla. They should probably have a statement uh, prepared for a situation like that, where they can just auto reply to them and at least they will be part of the story instead of saying that, oh, you know, Tesla never replied to our inquiry. But nevertheless, uh, as far as the comment is concerned, um, I don't know why I, I took it out of the screen. Let me bring it back. Um, you know, here's the thing. And I guess this is where we need to figure out. I don't know the answer, but here's a question. Let me know in the comment section. Um, where does respons responsibility lies, right? Is it on the media that are, you know, obviously trying to do headlines? I know I'm a YouTuber. I know how important the headline is or title of the um, of the of the video because no one's going to watch the video if they're not going to click on it. Same goes for newspapers, right? So obviously there's a you know part of marketing and PR that goes into the headlines, uh, but at the same time, isn't that our responsibility as consumers and readers knowing that, right? We're all smart enough. Most of us are smart enough to know that that's how the world goes around. To actually, if you are interested ab about something that you're reading headline or a video title of to actually dive in and read a little bit about it, if not the whole thing. Now, I have to say, I've been frustrated myself when people read the title of my video and then just comment on that, and then I have the entire explanation of, uh, in the video and I realize they never even bothered watching. So I think there is a responsibility on viewers and readers and so forth to actually dig in rather than just reading a, a, you know, a quick headline and then start talking about it and forming an opinion. So I think it goes both ways. Let me know what you guys think. I'm, you know, I, I think responsibility is on both ends and it's just a matter of finding the right balance for it, which right now we don't probably have. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my opinion on that. Looking forward to yours. Other than that, um, well, let me just, before I, before I do this, let me remind you guys that, um, so I'll do a live show uh, and a new show tomorrow, which is Thursday. 
but uh, on Friday, I will actually be going to a BMW event in, uh, in the UK. I will produce a report about that probably next Sunday after that. So my Friday, um, show will be pre-recorded just wanted to cover a topic about uh, model 3 and where i think this is going in the next few months because a lot of people are asking me about that the saturday interview with the ceo of workhorse is pre-recorded so that's just gonna go live and on sunday i'm actually gonna feature something pretty cool as my me being interviewed by uh, um, a british uh, podcaster which is also videotaped it uh recorded the zoom session so i'm gonna release that as well but i'll be back on monday live to you guys so uh hopefully that explains why i'll be a little bit out of touch um, uh, Friday through Sunday. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me, so I can end the video now. Um, other than that, of course, remember to stay charged.